Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Designer and I wanna show you how you can put together this folded text effect. So if this is something you would like to learn, then let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you wanna do inside of Affinity Designer is set up your brand new canvas. And just to be a bit quicker in the video, I've already done this in this other tab over here. And I've also created a gradient background just using the rectangle tool and applying a gradient to that. However, by default, you guys may have a transparent background or a white background. So once you're ready to get started, the first thing that we want to do is head over to the left hand side to our toolbar menu. And we are going to choose the artistic text tool. Then this is where you're going to type out any kind of words that you may want to use for your design. So just to be a bit quicker in the video, rather than writing subscribe, I'm going to shorten that and I'm going to write in sub. Then I'm going to head up to the top toolbar menu to my alignment options. And I just want to align this in the center horizontally as well as vertically. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. That then will center that in the middle of my canvas. I'm also going to hit command or control zero on my keyboard just to fit the screen. And now we can move on to the next step. So the one thing you want to do before we move on to the next step is make sure that you are happy with the word that you wrote. Because if you want to change any of this after this next step that we're going to take, it's not going to be possible. You will no longer be able to edit the font. So if you are happy with the word that you've got, then what we need to do now is just go up to the top left menu bar to where it says layer. We're going to go down towards the bottom where it says convert to curves. And what this will do is it will convert our font to be in its own custom shape, meaning that we can start manipulating that and just adding a few different kind of effects. So once you're ready, go ahead and hit convert to curves. Then if we just look over in the right hand side in our layers menu, you can now see we have this new group. And inside of the group, we have the individual letters that has just been converted. And because we have to do each letter separately, I'm going to start off with my S. Then I'm going to make my way back over to the left hand side toolbar menu. This time around, I'm going to select the node tool, which is that white arrow right there. Once we select the node tool, you can now see we have all these different circles and squares around our letter. And what these are going to be used for are going to be to determine where we would like to make a cut. So for this design, I'm going to cut from this left hand side here over to this right hand side right there. So first of all, I select this point here on the right hand side and that's going to be highlighted blue as you can see. Then I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard while I come back over to the left and select that one as well. That then is going to select both of these points at the same time. Then what we need to do next is go up to the top toolbar menu to where it says action. And inside of here, we have to select the break curve option. Then once we've done that, if I just zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see this on your screens, you can see we've got this little faint line that's gone straight across from this side over to this side. And now that has cut that into two different pieces. And we can confirm that if we go over into the layers on the right hand side. And now you can see we've got these two different layers, one being the top part of the S and the other layer being the rest of the letter. So what I want to do at this point is I just want to drag this top part to be above the rest of the letter. And I'm going to do that by holding down on my mouse while I just drag up and then just let that go. And I'm just going to give this a bit of a darker color at the moment just to separate that so we can see it. And I'll zoom back out at this point with command or control zero. Then what we're going to do now with this piece selected is we're going to rotate this as well as flip that into the opposite direction. So if we make our way back over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we go ahead and we select our move tool at the top there. Then we make our way over to the top toolbar menu where we have our options up here where we can start flipping horizontally as well as vertically. First one we'll select is flip vertically. Then we'll go ahead and we'll select flip horizontally. Then what we need to do is just start moving this around and kind of let that snap into place so it's going to align that perfectly for us just like that. And now if I just deselect that you can kind of see how this is coming together already. But of course we want to make this a little bit more creative than just like that. So if we make our way back over to the left hand side toolbar menu and select that node tool once again, what we need to do is make sure that we are on the layer that we want to edit. And for this, it's going to be that individual piece over there. So once I select that, we now have all these points that we had before. But this time round, instead of making a cut, what we actually want to do is just select some of these and just start to drag those in and out, just kind of reshape that a little bit. And at this point, it's just a case of getting as creative as you can. So I'm going to select this point here. and I'm going to start dragging that as well to manipulate that shape a little bit more. And of course, you can add some additional circles along this line if you want. All you've got to do is tap anywhere along here. So I'm going to put one there. I'm just going to start to pull that one in a little bit. And if we just adjust these side handles, that's just going to make that curve a little bit bigger. 
and just have a little play around with this just to try and get that to look as good as you can. So I'm happy with that side. And this side, I'll create another point as well. And I'm going to pull that in just a little bit. Then I'll just deselect that and see how it looks. So that doesn't look too bad at all. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to add a gradient to this and a drop shadow just to look that little bit more authentic. So once again, I'll go over to the right hand side layer section. I'll select that shape. Then I'll make my way back over to the left hand side toolbar menu. This time around, I'm going to select the fill tool, which is going to give us our gradient. And that is just a case of selecting our start point just up there and then just dragging that down to be somewhere towards the bottom. So these are the colors I'm going to roughly use a bit of a lighter blue at the top leading down to the darker blue at the bottom. But what I want to do in the middle of this is I'm going to give it kind of a highlight. So I'm going to tap on that. Then I'm going to head over to the right hand side to my color wheel. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter in blue somewhere around that color is perfectly fine. Then I'm just going to come back over and adjust that slightly just to get that more in the middle of where I'm going for. So somewhere around there is perfectly fine. And now if I come off this, we can kind of see the effect that we've got. So you can see how it's kind of looking pretty good already. So next we'll add a drop shadow on there as well. So I'll go ahead and select that once again. And this time around, we're going to go down to the bottom to where we have the effects. And we are going to choose the outer shadow. And for the radius and the offset, I'm just going to give this two pixels on each. So two on the radius, two on the offset. I'm going to drop that opacity down to about 40%, somewhere around there. Then what we need to do is kind of angle the shadow in the direction that you want it to go. And because this is kind of folded over on itself this way, I'm going to have the shadow coming downwards. So with the angle over here, I'm going to bring that all the way down to 270. And that isn't looking too bad. You could go a little bit bigger with your pixels if you want a bigger shadow. So maybe three on each one of those. But for me personally, I prefer it being on two pixels on each one of those. So I'm going to keep that the way it was. I'll go ahead and close that just for a moment. So what we can do now is we can move on to the other letters if you want to go ahead and leave the S the way it is. However, if you decide that you want to make another cut on the same letter, then there's an important step that we need to do. And that is going to be closing the shape. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by selecting the S once again. So if we go back over to the layers and we select the S and we go and grab our node tool. So we're back to square one. If we now decide that we want to make a cut down here, maybe from across this side to this side. So I'll go ahead and I'll select that point. Hold down shift and I'll select the other one. If I come up here now to the action menu and I'll try to break this curve, you're going to see this is going to happen, which is going to completely mess up the design. And of course, that is not what you want to do. So at this point, I'll hit command or control Z just to go backwards and undo. And I'll explain what we need to do in order for this to work. So if we pay attention to the top of the letter here where we've got this little red circle, what we need to do is we need to rejoin this side again to this side. And that is going to close the shape. So if I select this side first, hold down shift on my keyboard once again, select the other side, then head back up to that action menu at the top. This time around, we are going to choose a close curve. And now what this has done is created a brand new shape for us. So if I go ahead and just turn this one off on the visibility, we can now see that there'll be no break around this entire shape. So I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And now I'm free to come back down here and cut this section out as well. So if I select that first point, I'm going to hold down shift while selecting the second one. Go back up to our action menu. Once again, we're going to break the curve. And now you can see we had no issue whatsoever. So once again, we're going to go back over to the layer section and we're going to drag this piece above the rest of the S just like that. And just to be a bit quicker in terms of adding the gradient on here, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the style on this one. So if we go back over to our layers and we select that layer, we're going to come up to the top toolbar menu where it says edit. We're going to go down, we're going to hit copy. Then we'll head back over to our right hand side layer section, select the other piece. Then once again, go back up to the edit menu on the top menu bar. And we are going to select paste style. Then that will give us that same effect. But what we need to do at this point is select our move tool and we've got to rotate this like we did before. So I'm going to come back up to the top menu bar and I'm going to flip this around horizontally as well as vertically. Then once again, we'll just drag that into position to let that snap. Sometimes it will snap automatically, other times it won't. So you may have to have a little play around with that and just get that as close as you can. That's not looking too bad. So just like before, we'll grab our node tool once again and we'll just start to change the shape just a little bit by adding additional points. So I'll put one in the middle there. And you'll notice as well that we have a square at the moment. And if I pull this up, that's going to give us a sharp angle just like that. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z just to undo. If you decide you want a nice curve in here instead of a pointed angle, then we just need to convert this square here to be in a smooth curve. And we'll do that on the top toolbar menu where it says convert. 
and just change that to be a smooth and then come back down and we can just drag that up again that'll give us more of a rounded effect so I'm going to drag that all the way up there to around there then what we need to do is just readjust our gradient to look a little bit better so if we go back over to the left hand side toolbar menu and select our fill tool and then we can just go ahead and just drag that down a little bit and just readjust that in the position that you may want to put it so I'm going to go roughly around there I think and that will do perfectly fine just to be a bit quicker and now we can move on to our next letter so because I don't want to make any more cuts inside of my letter S I don't have to worry too much about closing that shape so I can just go ahead and leave that the way it is so if we make our way over to the right hand side layer section once again and we select the U then head back over to the left hand side and grab our node tool and then it's just a simple case of doing the same thing that we've already done on the letter S just decide where you want to make your cut so for this one I'll start on this top right hand corner holding down shift on my keyboard I'm going to select the bottom one here so that will highlight both of those together then I'll go back up to the action menu once again and we're going to hit break curve then I'll just head back over to the layers once again I'm going to select that piece we just cut out and I'll go back up to edit and we'll paste that style once again so it gives us that gradient then we'll go and grab our move tool and we're going to flip this horizontally so I'm going to come up to the top menu bar and I'll flip horizontally right there so this time round, we're not going to flip this vertically as I don't think it's going to look right so what we're going to do instead is we're going to join this top corner up here on the left hand side to this top corner and the bottom corner over to this bottom corner and the way that we would do that is just simply by rotating the shape with this little ball at the top here just select that and pull that round to the right hand side and this is going to be a lot of trial and error just to get this lined up correctly so you have to keep coming back and forth to you and get that the way that you like it so I just speeded up the video at this point as it took me around a minute or so just to get this lined up to where I want it but it's looking pretty good the way it is so what we need to do next is just readjust the gradient like we did before so if we go back over to the left hand side and we grab our fill tool then it's just a case of dragging these points again just to line up to where you want it to go so just to be quick I'll have that roughly around there then next we're going to go back over to the left hand side once again and we'll grab our node tool so we can start to bend this a little bit and I think I'll just create a curve at the top here so I'm going to come into the center of this line create a new point and I want to make this a smooth curve so once again we'll go up to where it says convert at the top menu and we'll choose that smooth then I'm just going to drag this down to roughly get the kind of effect that I'm going for so somewhere around there will be perfectly fine and maybe just adjust that handle a little bit just to make the curve a little bit bigger so I'll just go and deselect that so we can see what we've got that doesn't look too bad so before we go and start adding some more effects to the rest of this we'll continue with the letter B so if I go over and select the letter B and we can decide how we want to cut this so when it comes to letters that have a hollow piece in the inside of it it can be a bit more complicated and may not necessarily work the way you think it would so just to demonstrate if I go back over to the left hand side and grab my node tool if I decide I want to make a cut straight across here just by selecting that point there coming back up to this top corner holding down shift select that point and I go up to my action menu and I'll select break curve you can see this is what's happened and it doesn't look right and of course that is not what you want to do so I'm going to hit command or control z for undo and we'll talk about how we can achieve that kind of effect in just a moment but if you want to go ahead and copy this kind of effect here where we're going to cut from there and maybe down here that will work as normal or this kind of effect up here where we'll cut from this point maybe down to here which I will quickly just demonstrate so I'll create a brand new point just here that I can match up to this one up here so I'll select both of these go up to the action menu break that curve that works exactly as it should so I'll go ahead and hit command or control z to undo and that's going to be the same principle as well if I do it from maybe here down to this bottom corner I'll go ahead and I'll break that curve that works perfectly fine as it should you're only ever going to have problems when it comes to maybe trying to cut straight through with the hollow part in the middle so we'll talk about how we can overcome that problem and the way that we're going to do that is by introducing another shape into this so if I go over to the left hand side and I grab a rectangle and what I want to do is just draw this big enough to be the kind of size that I want then I'm going to go in and I'm going to rotate that to the position where I want this to cut through the text and just adjust that to any kind of size that you like and I'll go and move that into the position that I want it so I'm going to want this to cut roughly over around there so with this now in position what we need to do is we've got to select the rectangle that we've already got and we need to select the B at the same time so with the rectangle highlighted in the layers if you hold down command or control on your keyboard and hit the B as well that'll select both of those at the same time 
Then what we're going to do is come up to the top menu bar to our shape building tools and we're going to come all the way over to the end to where it says divide. Once we select that, what's going to happen is it's going to cut this into all individual pieces. And then it's just a case of us selecting the bits that we don't want such as this piece, hitting delete, and that'll get rid of that piece. And then we want to get rid of this piece in the middle as well. So we'll go ahead and delete that one. But now you can see we have another problem down here where it's took away the hollow part from the inside of the B. And the way that we would get this back is by coming over to our layers once again, selecting that hollow piece right there. Hold down command or control on your keyboard while selecting the rest of the B underneath. So that selects both of those at the same time. Then we'll go back to the top menu bar with the shape building tools. But this time round, we are going to select this option right here, which is subtract. And now you can see that has gone back to the way that it should be. And now we have that individual piece that we wanted as well. So now we have this piece cut out. What we're going to do next is rotate it like we did before. So we'll come to the top menu bar and we'll flip that horizontally and vertically. And we'll just move this into position. Hopefully that'll snap into place. Then once again, we'll go over to the left hand side, grab our node tool so we can reshape this a little bit and make it look a little bit more creative. So I'm going to drag this point in here and I'll make another one over here as well. Turn that into a smooth curve and we'll just adjust that as well to make it look a little bit better. So I'll bring that roughly around there and just drag that handle over and maybe make that one a smooth one as well, just to look that little bit better. And maybe we'll just mess with that one as well, just to make that look a little bit better. So if anything, maybe I'll just delete that point and just put that in like that. Then once again, we'll adjust that gradient. So we'll grab that fill tool and we'll just position this to where we want it to go. So I'm going to drag that over here and just pull that one up on this side. That isn't looking too bad. So I've noticed we don't have a drop shadow on this piece. So if we come back over to the layers and we go down, we apply the effects, come back into the outer shadow. We'll do what we did before. We'll have a two on the radius and a two on the offset. We'll position the angle at 270 degrees. And I'll drop that opacity down to around 40. Then that will just replicate the effect that we put on the previous ones. So what I'm going to do next is I want to group all of these cut pieces together. So if we come back over to our layers on the right hand side, and we're going to select all these pieces by themselves. So I'll just go ahead and move all those underneath each other to make it easier. And then I'll select all of these by selecting that top one. Then coming down to the bottom one, we're holding shift on my keyboard. I'll select that bottom one. That's going to select everything else in between. Then I'm going to hit command or control G on my keyboard, which is going to create a group. Then I'll just drag this group outside of that one. So we've got the two pieces individually. Then what we're going to do from here is we're going to put a drop shadow on the rest of these letters. So if we come down now to the effects, once again, once you've selected your group, we're going to select outer shadow. And once again, we'll give that a two on the radius and the two on the offset. But that's around 40% on the opacity. Angle that down at 270 degrees so it copies what we've done with the other pieces. Then I also want to apply a gradient to this just to look a little bit better. So back over to the left hand side, if we select the fill tool and we'll just drag from the top down to the bottom, and we've just got to go ahead and change the colors in here to anything that you like. So for the bottom, I want a dark blue. So what I'm going to do is grab my eyedropper tool so I can sample this dark blue over here. Then I'll select that color for the bottom. And for the top, I'm going to have a lighter blue, so I'll select that one as well. Come up here to the color wheel and find something a little bit lighter. That color doesn't look too bad just to be quick. So that generally is that effect finished if you want to leave it the way it is, but we can make this look a little bit better. And the way that we would do that is just by simply changing the opacity on our cutout pieces right here. So if we come back over to the right hand side in our layers, we select the group that has all of our cutout pieces. If we head up to where it says opacity and we'll drop that down to around 80% and then you can see how much of a great effect that generally is. It kind of looks like a transparent sticker effect. So one thing I have noticed which I want to quickly rectify is the fact that I've put this piece here on the B on backwards. So I'm going to go into my group. I'm going to go ahead and select that piece. Then I'll move to the top menu bar once again. I'm going to flip that horizontally. Then I'm just going to come down. I'm going to rotate this into the position that I want it and just try and line that up. So just move that roughly down around there and get that as close as you can. And that is now looking so much better. So that is the end of today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then please go ahead and hit that like button as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
and check out all of my other Affinity Designer tutorials as there's some really good effects in there. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in my next video.